Welcome to section 41 of the viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Coxsackie A and B, which you can see right here. Our Coxsackie story takes place in a little arena under the Peacock Emperor's rule. Here's the arena, currently housing a cockfight, a battle of two roosters. Cockfight sounds like Coxsackie for Coxsackie A and B. Coxsackie virus is one of the picornaviruses. So here is our tyrannical Peacock Emperor. As mentioned in the previous videos, Peacock stands for Picornavirus. As always, the Peacock Emperor has his trusty stick with him, with that gaudy icosahedral gem on the top. This icosahedral gem represents the icosahedral capsid of Coxsackie virus. Now notice the red and warm color scheme to this image. We like to use red and warm colors to help you remember that this is an RNA virus. Now look at that rainbow. Rainbows typically give people positive vibes, so we'd like to use rainbows to represent positive sense viruses. And Coxsackie A and B are both positive sense viruses. You've probably noticed these asteroids back here. Asteroids seem to follow this evil emperor everywhere he goes. And this gigantic one right here has broken up into a bunch of smaller pieces, which you can see scattering around. This giant asteroid breaking into smaller ones represents the fact that once the host ribosomes translate the viral RNA into a single giant viral protein, Proteases then cleave the giant protein into a bunch of smaller functional ones. So giant asteroid breaking into tiny pieces stands for giant protein cleaving into smaller proteins. Now it wouldn't be a royal cockfight without some feral spectators. So here's a line of henchmen cheering on the competitors. This line represents the fact that Coxsackie A and B are linear viruses. Now let's focus more on the cockfight itself. Following the bloody battle, this victorious cock has blood spattered on his hands, and his feet, and his beak. This represents the hand-foot-mouth distribution of the vesicles that patients get. Now here are three images showing the vesicular lesions on a hand, some feet, and a mouth. Now another term for the Coxsackie vesicles in the mouth is herpangina. Now if you look back at the standing rooster, you'll see he also has blood spattered on his tail. This represents the fact that Coxsackie can also appear on the buttocks, so the disease could very well be called hand-foot-mouth-butt. Now over here to the right of the image, we can see a shop selling pig intestines. Harvesting and selling pig intestines is a pretty diabolical trade within our tyrant's economy. Anyways, this represents the fact that Coxsackie virus is an enterovirus. As mentioned in the echovirus and poliovirus videos, enteroviruses replicate inside the intestines. So the intestines shop stands for enterovirus. Now this henchman here has just left the intestines shop and has tripped and slammed his head right onto a rock. You can see that rock down below. Even his hat is falling off. Smacking his head on the rock and the hat falling off represent meningitis. All enteroviruses can cause meningitis. Now you can see this beastly bird in the old-fashioned cart back here. Typically, we like to use cars to represent cardiac conditions such as cardiomyopathy or cardiomegaly. But a modern car didn't really fit well with this story, so we thought an old-fashioned cart would be better. And as you can see, this cart has a giant rooster within it waiting for his turn in the arena. He is super full of muscle. You can see him bulging there. And this represents the inflammation of the heart's muscular layer with Coxsackie infections. And this layer is called the myocardium. And in Coxsackie infections, the myocardium can become weakened and the patients can actually experience heart failure. Now to represent heart failure, we made the rooster super round and almost look edematous, so full of fluid. So bringing this all together now, inflammation of the myocardium is called myocarditis, which again can lead to heart failure. Now the clumsy wolf henchman knocked over a barrel of oil when he fell and hit his head. And this oil actually led to this fire circling around the cart. Now this circle of fire surrounding the cart represents pericarditis, which is inflammation around the heart. Some of the flames have even fallen on his chest, and you can see it singeing his fur. And likely that's very painful. This represents the fact that pericarditis can cause chest pain. But don't forget that chest pain can also be caused by the heart failure from myocarditis. Now look at this little pig victim over here. He's totally naked. Thankfully, we have this black box covering certain areas. This naked pig will help you remember that Coxsackie viruses are naked, so they don't have an envelope. Now this wolf is hugging the pig like he's a stuffed animal. I guess the wolf is hoping to eat the poor guy. Anyways, wrapping his arms around the pig represents endocytosis, which is how naked viruses gain entry into host cells. And contrast this to enveloped viruses, which fuse their envelopes within the host cell membrane, and they gain entry that way. So again, arms wrapping around naked pig for endocytosis. Now look at this IRS henchman. As described in previous videos, the IRS crew enforces the emperor's oppressive taxation. For our purposes, IRS stands for internal ribosomal entry site. If you need a refresher on this concept, please see the poliovirus lecture. Now that we've covered the elements of the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. 
An eight-year-old boy presents to his pediatrician due to high fevers and a rash on his hands and feet. His temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical examination reveals multiple vesicles on the boy's palms and soles. The boy complains of chest pain and shortness of breath. The physician suspects that Koksaki is the culprit of the boy's presentation. Which of the following statements is not true regarding this patient's condition? A. The chest pain may be due to fluid in the lungs. B. Vesicles may be present on the buttocks. C. Functional virions will not be found in the patient's stool. Or D. Nuchal rigidity may occur in some infected patients. So hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has vesicles on his hands and feet. This indicates a likely Coxsackie infection. We're also told that the patient has chest pain. And Coxsackie can cause chest pain for two reasons. Pericarditis or myocarditis. And if the boy has shortness of breath, we're thinking more of heart failure because fluid would go into the lungs. So with all of this in mind, the answer choice that is not related to the child's condition is C. Functional virions will not be found in the patient's stool. This is a false statement. Enteroviruses, including Coxsackie virus, replicate in the intestines and produce functional virions in the stool as a result. This means that virions can be used to propagate an infection elsewhere. Recall that this is an enterovirus, as indicated by the pig intestines. This means Coxsackie virus can actively replicate in the intestines and produce functional infectious virions in the stool. Now choice A is wrong because this is a true statement. Chest pain can be due to fluid in the lungs. Recall that chest pain can be due to pericarditis or edema in the lungs from heart failure. Again, we'd attribute the heart failure to myocarditis. And choice B is wrong because this is also a true statement. Vesicles can be present on the buttocks, in addition to the hands, feet, and mouth. And finally, choice D is wrong because this is also a true statement. This refers to meningitis, which is definitely possible with a Coxsackie infection. Remember that since it's an enterovirus, it can cause meningitis. And meningitis can cause nuchal rigidity. And with that, we've covered all the material you need to know about Coxsackie virus.